window on Main Street. John Neldrum, M.D. A new young doctor moving into a town is generally faced with a slow start. But here was one whose start was not only slow, it looked impossible. And for a rather odd reason. I got the first hint that young John was walking into some kind of trouble. The day Chris Logan and I looked over this place as a possible office for him. This here's the waiting room. Nice size. The former tenant, Doc Krennic, used to have eight, nine patients in here at once. All comfortable. Oh, it's not bad. Very modern furnishings, too. These magazines are hardly five years old. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the office in here. Nice size, too. And plenty of light. Uh, well, uh... I'll have that fixed for you. <laughs> Is there a treatment room? Oh, yes. Sure. Nice treatment room. Mm, looks all right. What do you think? Well, it's certainly the best we've seen within the budget. Yes, I guess we better take it. How much did you say the advance deposit would be? Fifty dollars, ma'am. All right. How soon you want to move in, Doc? Oh, I'm not the doctor. It's her cousin. He arrives in town tomorrow. You may remember him, Mr. Archer. John Neldrum? Uh, no. Can't say that I do. He used to live here as a boy. Now he's finished his internship and he's coming home to start his practice. He feels this would be the best place because he knows so many people here. Uh-huh. Well, that's fine. Millsburg's a good town. Wait a minute. Uh, did you say Neldrum? That's right. Well, that surely wouldn't be Buzz Neldrum, would it? Yes. That was his nickname. Huh. Buzz Neldrum. He's a doctor? Yes. Anything wrong with that? Uh, no, no. Now, uh, if you folks want to look somewhere else for office space, feel free to go right ahead. No. I'm happy with this. And I'm sure that Dr. Neldrum will be happy here, too. Thank you. I hope so. Why do people have to travel? <laughs> I keep wondering if I'll recognize John. Why wouldn't you? It's been so long since I've seen him. You see, when he left, he went into the army. Korea. Then into medical school. And you know how long that takes. There he is! John! Chris! <laughs> oh, it's good to see you. It's wonderful to be home. And it's good to have you back. You look marvelous. So do you. Oh, John, this is Mr. Cameron Brooks. Oh, uh, I've heard a lot about you. Oh, no! Oh, not you! Hello, George. I figured you'd be happy to see me. Hide the baggage cars. Hide everything. Buzz Neldrum's back in town. But you've got a good memory. <laughs> Too good. <laughs> what was all that about? Oh, I guess I used to give poor old George kind of a bad time when I was a kid. I used to sneak his baggage carts and uh, leave them in strange places and soap the rails, not to remember what all. <laughs> oh, man, it's good to see the old town again. Best part about it is, I'm here for good. Ready to go to work. Well, I better get my luggage. Buzz! Warren! Well, what are you doing in town, you old jackrabbit? It's the same thing you're doing. I'm gonna live here. Well, wonderful. Gee, that's great. What are you gonna do? Look for a job? I hope I have one. I've been studying for it for the last 900 years, it seems like. I'm gonna practice here. Practice? <laughs> practice what? Medicine. <laughs> you're kidding. <laughs> You mean you're a doctor? 
That's right. Well, what do you know? I can't feature it. Dr. Buzz Neldrum? It just doesn't sound right somehow. Well, you better get used to it, Warren, because I'm going to be around here a long time. Well, I hope I don't get sick. <laughs> Look, Buzz, I have to rush now, but what are you doing Friday night? Not a thing. Good. I'll get some of the old gang together and we'll throw a party for you. A welcome home party. Okay, boys? I'll be there. Well, I'll see you, Buzz. <laughs> Well, John's homecoming party was a big success. Half the evening was spent in side-splitting reminiscences over the wonderful madcap pranks John used to pull as a boy. The other half in uh, kidding him with all the standard doctor jokes. A gay time was had, and it looked as though Dr. John Neldrum was off to a flying start. But then, in the next few weeks, about the only person sitting in Dr. Neldrum's waiting room, reading his new magazines, was... Uh, Dr. Neldrum. <laughs> Hi. Oh, Mr. Brooks. I thought for a minute it was a patient. Oh, sorry. No, I was just out for my daily walk. Thought I'd drop by and see how you were doing. Have a seat and I'll tell you. <laughs> the first day was very active. Archer, the landlord, came in to fix a curtain. Then a Girl Scout came in to sell me cookies. <laughs> that was weeks ago. Those are the last human beings I've seen. Well, I figured it'd be slow, naturally, but I never thought it would be a complete shutout. Well, I suppose people get into the habit of going to certain doctors, and habits are hard to change. <laughs> sure, but how long can a fellow hold out? I've done everything I can. I've sent out engraved announcements. I I've joined a couple of clubs. Even bought brand new magazines. Well, that's your whole trouble right there. <laughs> what else can I do? I can't advertise like a new grocery store. Can't run specials. Two appendectomies for the price of one. Hard to <laughs> Worst part about it is I turned down an offer to work for a doctor friend of mine, a Dr. Haywood in a coal mining town in West Virginia. Well, actually, the offer's still open, but, but darn it, this is where I want to practice and live. What's wrong, anyway? I've got lots of friends here, good friends. We used to do all kinds of crazy things together as kids. Well, maybe that's the trouble. Maybe they still think of you as a kid. But we've grown up. In fact, I remember the night I grew up. The night I changed from sort of a harebrained kid into a man with a mission. It was in Korea. Korea? Yes, the uh, army, for no sensible reason, put me in the medical corps. I resented it. The first night in action, I picked up a young G.I., half dead. And just by doing the routine things, I got him back alive. Later, when I had a chance to sleep, I couldn't. I just lay there looking at the stars, and I kept thinking about that boy. How important it was. How almost awesome it was to be able to save a human life. I knew then I wanted to devote the rest of my life to medicine. Well, John, I can see you have the right dedication to become a good doctor. Perhaps a great one. Yes, but how do I start? Well, I don't really know, John. But um, I intend to give it some thought. And surely there must be some effective ethical way to bring John a little business. Well, personally, I don't understand it at all. He's had wonderful training. He's so well liked. Both of you are missing the point about Buzz. Or John. He's a victim of his own boyhood. You mean because he used to play a few pranks? Oh, poo. A few pranks? Oh, Chris. Those so-called pranks were the work of a crazy, irresponsible boy. That's the way people still think of him. I know. I hear talk around town. Everyone's happy Buzz is back. But the minute they hear he's a doctor, they sort of draw back. You know, I've noticed that, too. Even Archer, the day we looked at the office, he almost backed out of the deal. When people go to a doctor, they want someone they've got confidence in. Oh, much as I like Buzz, I'm afraid it's a mistake for him to practice here. Too big a hurdle. Courier News. Oh, yes, John. Really? He has a patient. Well, good. <laughs> Who? Mrs. Appleby. Wonderful. 
Now listen, John. When she arrives, be very serious so she won't think you're an iris... <laughs> I mean, just be serious. And good luck. Hey, this could be the turning point. Well, which Mrs. Appleby? The insurance Appleby or the hardware Appleby? He didn't. <laughs> but they're both good, substantial citizens. Yeah. Only trouble is, they're both so status conscious. Worry about going to the right places. Whichever Appleby it is, I'm afraid when she sees that forsaken, empty waiting room, she'll walk right out. Well, if she's made an appointment. Even so, I'd feel much more confident if that waiting room were crowded to overflowing. If he loses this patient, I, I don't know what will happen to him. Ah, Mrs. Appleby, how do you do? Won't you please come into the office? Oh, doctor, I'm sorry I'm late for my appointment. But I hurried to get here as quickly as I could because I know how very, very busy you are. Yes, Hello, sir. doctor. <laughs> Chris, what are you doing? That's my patient out there. I know. We're just trying to make her think you're real busy. Yes, but that's... Oh, yeah. Relax for just a moment. She'll be much more impressed if she has to wait a moment. I know, believe me. You know, we're lucky. We've um, evidently hit a light day. Sometimes you can hardly find a seat around here. <laughs> but I guess you know that. No. This is my first visit. Oh? Well, you like Dr. Neldrum. Excellent doctor. But of course, uh, very busy. <laughs> Maybe he's too busy. Oh, no. <laughs> That's uh, Lloyd Ramsey, editor of the Courier News. Uh, Dr. Neldrum certainly gets all the prominent patients. <coughs> well, I hope I don't have another long wait today. Trouble with a good doctor, you never can get in to see him. <laughs> If he's that busy with important patients, he, he'll just never have time for me. Oh, he always finds time for everything. Oh, thank you, Doctor. You've helped me so much. All right, Mrs. Appleby. Will you please come in now? the Mrs. Applebee's. At least not the ones I know about. Well, what's the difference? The important thing is Dr. Neldrum has a patient. A paying patient. <laughs> I see. And what treatment did your former doctor prescribe? Well, uh, none. I mean, I haven't seen a doctor very often. Oh, but you should, Mrs. Appleby. Well, you see, we live 15 miles outside of town on a truck farm, and well, most doctors are so busy. Poor excuse, Mrs. Appleby. Let's step into the treatment room. Uh, there's another reason why I haven't been going to doctors. Uh, we won't worry about that. The important thing is to take care of you. I hope you mean that because, well, you see, the way the farm's been going lately, I have no money to pay you now. Well, that's not important. Let's step in here. In writing the story of Dr. John Neldrum, I kept hoping to write a big scene in which he is called in on a case that has baffled the other doctors, performs an impossible emergency operation, and becomes the hero of Millsburg. But, uh, alas, life isn't that cooperative. Instead, all I could write was that John Neldrum 
dogged by his reputation as a mischievous, irresponsible boy, became more and more discouraged. The end traces, Ben. Hide your telegraph key, Ben. Here comes Peck's bad boy. <laughs> How'd they go in? Doctor? Fine, George, fine. Buzz, I hope this isn't going to be like the last telegram I recollect you sending. You remember that, George? No, what was that? Well, that time Buzz here got a hold of a few hundred telegraph blanks, typed out the message, meet me in the park tonight. Signed them, honey, and delivered them to about every man in town. <laughs> that night, the park was swarming with half the male population in town. The other half had been locked up by their wives. <laughs> oh, what a mess. <laughs> Some riot. <laughs> oh, I've been looking for you, George. Howdy, Mr. Brooks. I was expecting a package of books on the 210. Did they arrive? Nope. But, uh, the 210 don't arrive until, uh, 4-7 on a Friday. <laughs> Should have figured that. <laughs> Hello, John. What's doing? Well, you don't want to send this to you. What else is there left to do? Uh, come on, take a little walk with me. John, you don't want to do this, do you? Go to West Virginia and work for this Dr. Haywood? Oh, it's a lot better than starving to death. Nothing here for me, but a lot of people who can't let my foolish boyhood die. Maybe if you waited just a while longer. Wait for what? All I have is one patient, Mrs. Appleby. One patient who can't pay. Look, I know it's rough, but John, there's got to be a way to lick this. How about trying to get on the staff at the hospital for a while? I've tried that already. I want to see Dr. Blake. He's the chief of staff. He said he'd get right back to me. Well, that was over a week ago. I haven't heard a thing from him. Well, he's probably a pretty busy man. Give him a few more days before you send this telegram. That's no use. Uh oh, I've got to get back to the office to see my one and only patient. All right. I'll wait a few more days, but that's all. So long. Well, you continue those capsules for another week, Mrs. Appleby. You're making good progress. Oh, I sure am, Doctor. My husband says I'm beginning to seem like my old self again. Well, that's fine. Dr. Blake. Hello, Meldrum. Oh, goodbye, Doctor. Uh, oh, uh, goodbye, Mrs. Appleby. Well, this is very kind of you, Dr. Blake. You needn't have come here. I mean, I could have gone to your office. Well, I uh, wanted to talk to you more or less unofficially. Oh, well, yes, of course. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Cigarette? Uh, no, thanks. Naldrum, I've been over your records, checked into your training, and I'm impressed. Excellent. Well, thank you, sir. I also remember you as a boy. You were somewhat on the wild side. But I must say, you were pretty imaginative. You had intelligence and nerve. But it was all misdirected then. Now that you've found your direction, those can be invaluable qualities for a doctor to have. Yes, sir. Uh, unfortunately, I don't make the appointments at the hospital. That's up to the board of directors. And I'm afraid they have no imagination. In other words, they don't want me. Well, they didn't put it that way. They'd like to wait and see. And we have a long waiting list. When you get better established, come and see me again. When I get better established, yes. Thank you, Dr. Blake. Not at all. Goodbye. Get better established. Dr. Paul Haywood, Morgan Hill, West Virginia. Accepting your offer, plan to leave here Saturday. Signed, John Neldrum. What's this? You leaving, Buzz? 
Yep, I'm leaving. That make you happy, George? Nope. Not particularly. Fact is, I'm sorry to see you go, Buzz. You know, I could have told you. You sure picked the wrong place to try to be a doctor. 85 cents, Buzz. Yes, I sure picked the wrong place. Yep. George, can you send somebody over to pick up my stuff tomorrow? Sure. Well, see, be short-handed tomorrow. And uh, I'll do it myself. Give you a personal service, Buzz. Thanks. awful about this, John. Wish I could make you change your mind. But I admit I've been no help to you here. Oh, I'm not blaming you, Chris. Who knows, maybe I like that mining town. Coal dust is easier to fight than prejudice. Oh, that must be my beloved pal, George Pritchard, giving me personal service. Mrs. Appleby, you didn't have an appointment today. No, I know that, Doctor. But my husband was telling how his grandmother used to pay the doctor. And I thought maybe, well, at least it's better than nothing. <laughs> Cabbage, as tender as young lettuce. And, and, and tomatoes, and, and beets, and the sweetest corn in the county. And next week, I'll bring you another basket. And pretty soon now, we expect to have some money. Hello, oh, boss. <clears throat> uh, stuff ready to go. I haven't much time. Yes. It's back in the office, George. Mrs. Appleby, you didn't need to do this. Well, it's small enough, thanks, for all you've done for me, Doctor. I just don't know what I would have done if you hadn't come to town. Almost seems as though the good Lord sent you here. You've not only been a good doctor for me, but you've been like a good friend, too. If you ever left Millsburg, I just wouldn't know where to turn. Did Buzz actually have a patient? Sure. <laughs> I have to go. My, my husband's waiting in the truck, but I'll see you my regular time next week. Uh, Mrs. Appleby, about next week. Yes? I, uh... Nothing. Goodbye, Mrs. Appleby. Goodbye, Doctor. <coughs> oh, George, never mind about that. I'm not leaving. Huh? You're not leaving? No. A doctor doesn't desert a patient who needs him. What do you know? <laughs> Whatever you say, Buzz. I suppose you think I have rocks in my head. At least I won't starve to death. <laughs> Didn't you understand, George? I won't need you. I'm staying. Uh, yep, I know, I know. Uh, but, uh, well, I, I've been plagued by a peculiar kind of pain in my back lately. <laughs> and, uh, I wonder if you take a look at it. Doctor. <laughs> In my next chapter, I'll tell you about the startling discovery of the past life of a chambermaid at the Majestic Hotel. So please join me for another look at Millsburg through my window on Main Street. It's United Campaign Time. Let's remember our local United Fund or community chest. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>